This is the 2020 Maxed Undergraduate Mathematics A paper. Let's begin. Section 1, number 1. So we are given that there are three sets, A, B, and C, and C is a proper subset of A. Every element in C is also contained in A, but there are some elements in A that are not included in C. We can express this relationship using a Venn diagram. So here's our A. C is contained inside A, like this. And here's set B. First of all, the number of elements in set C, but not in set B, is 8. So in this diagram, this refers to this area here, because it is inside C, but not inside B. The number of elements in set A, but not in either B or C, is 31, which would be this region here. The number of elements in A, but not in C, is 47. This region plus 31 is equal to 47. So this region here must be 16. And since the number of elements in set A is 66, the region in green can be calculated by 66 minus 31 minus 8 minus 16, 11. And finally, the number of elements in B, but not in C, is 42. 16 plus something is equal to 42. So this region here must be 26. Therefore, the number of elements in set A or set B or set C is 31 plus 8 plus 11 plus 16 plus 26, 92. So this is the answer. Number 2. We have a quadratic function, y equals x squared, and we are told that there's a point, 0, 4, on the y-axis. And we need to figure out the minimum distance between this point and points on the graph. First of all, let's assume that there's a point on the parabola, whose coordinates are x sub 1 and y sub 1, such that the straight line that goes through these two points is perpendicular to the tangent that goes through the second point, like this. Then the equation of this red straight line must be y sub 1 equals m, which is the slope, times x sub 1 plus the y-intercept 4. Next, let's think about the slope of the blue line, the tangent line. The slope is the derivative of the parabola, which is 2x, and the slope at this point would be 2x sub 1. And because the red line and the blue line are perpendicular to each other, the product of the slope of the red line and the slope of the blue line, m times 2x sub 1, must equal minus 1. Therefore, the slope of the red line is minus 1 over 2x sub 1. And let's plug in this value into the equation of the red line. So now we know that y sub 1 is 7 over 2. To find the x coordinate, let's substitute this value of y into the equation of the parabola. So the x coordinate is plus or minus root 14 over 2. And now that we know the coordinates of the blue point here, let's calculate the distance between these two points. Using this formula for the distance between two points, 
And now we have the answer. The distance between these points is root 15 over 2. Number 3. We have a quadratic function, y equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 2. To find the x coordinates of the vertex, use this formula, where a is the coefficient of x squared and b is the coefficient of x. To find the y coordinate of the vertex, let's substitute this value of x into x here. The coordinates of the vertex are 3 over 2 and minus 5 over 2. So this is our graph. Question says that there's a line x equals 2 and we have to flip this graph with respect to this vertical line. So it's going to look something like this. And in order to figure out the vertex of the blue parabola, let's consider the difference between x equals 2 and the x coordinate of the vertex of the original parabola. 2 minus 3 over 2 is one half. So the distance here is a half. So that means that this blue parabola is the black parabola shifted one unit to the right. So the vertex here must be 5 over 2 comma minus 5 over 2. This number 5 over 2 comes from 3 over 2 plus 1. And next we have to flip this blue parabola with respect to a horizontal line y equals 3. So let's calculate the vertical distance between this straight line and the y coordinate of the blue parabola. 3 minus minus 5 over 2 is 11 over 2. So the distance here is 11 over 2 and the new parabola which is flipped upside down like this its vertex must be 22 over 2 units above the original vertex. The x-coordinate must remain the same, but the y-coordinate will be minus 5 over 2 plus 22 over 2, which is 17 over 2. Now, given the equation of the original parabola, we know that the coefficient of x squared of the red parabola is minus 2 because the shape of the red parabola is the same as the shape of the black original parabola but the red parabola is the black parabola turned upside down so the sign must be inverted in order to find the coefficient of x we can use the formula for finding the x coordinate of the vertex because the formula includes the constants a and b and we already know the x coordinate of the vertex which is 5 over 2 and the value of a, which is minus 2. So the coefficient of x is 10. And to find the final constant, let's substitute all the values that we know so far. Number 4. We are given that x and y are integers and that x plus y is a multiple of 2. And we are also given two inequalities. x plus 4y is less than or equal to 17. 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 21. First of all, this second statement that x plus 1 is a multiple of 2 implies that x and y are either both odd numbers or both even numbers. But the first inequality says that x plus 4y can be equal to 17. But if x and y were both even numbers, like 2 and 4, they can never be equal to an odd number. Therefore, x and y must both be odd numbers. Let's draw the graphs of these two inequalities by treating them as equations and find the intersection of these two straight lines. 
So these two straight lines intersect at 5 comma 3. So the graph should look something like this. And the region that satisfies both these conditions is here. And now what we need to do is to assume that x plus 2y is equal to some constant, let's call it a, and that the graph of this equation goes through this point, 5,3, like this. So let's substitute the values of this point and find the value of a. So a is 11, and these values, 5 and 3, satisfy the condition that both x and y must be odd numbers. So x plus 2y is maximum when x is 5 and y is 3 and the max value is 11. Question 5 We are given two parabolas. Let's draw a quick sketch, and we need to find the equation of the common tangent line. We only need to find the one with a positive slope. Let's call these points x sub b, comma, y sub b, where b stands for blue, and let's call the coordinates of this point x sub r, comma, y sub r, where r stands for red. Now, whenever we are dealing with a tangent line, we need to differentiate these equations. dy dx equals x dy dx equals 1 over 4x. And at this point on the red parabola, the slope of the tangent must be dy dx equals, and let's substitute this value, x sub r, and at this point, on the blue parabola, dy dx must be 1 over 4 times x sub b. And these two values must be equal to each other because they both describe the same slope. So x sub r is 1 over 4 x sub b. And we can rewrite this as x sub b equals 4 x sub r. Next, let's substitute the x values of these points into these equations so that the y coordinates can be expressed in terms of x only. So let's plug in this value into the equation of the blue parabola. 1 over 8 x sub b squared minus 2. And let's plug in this value into the equation of the red parabola. 1 over 2 x sub r squared minus 8. When we know the coordinates of two points, we can calculate the slope between these two points using the following formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And now we can use this information here. We know that x sub b is equal to 4x sub r. So let's plug in this value into x sub b. So now we know that the slope of the tangent line is x sub r squared plus 4 over 2x sub r. And because m is the slope of the tangent line, m must be equal to dy dx, therefore m must be equal to x sub r. x sub r must be either plus 2 or minus 2, but because we are only considering the positive version of the tangent line, we are choosing the positive one. So x sub r must be 2. x sub b is 4 times 2, which is 8. The slope of the tangent line is equal to x sub r. So this line must be y equals 2x plus b, where b is the y-intercept. Let's find the y-coordinates 
of this point by substituting this value into this equation. When x is 2, y is minus 6. Therefore, b must be minus 10. Equation of the tangent line is y equals 2x minus 10. And this is the answer that we want. Number 6. In this question, we are given that t is cosine x, and we have a function f of x, cosine 2x plus cosine 3x, and we want to express this function in terms of t. To solve this question, we need to use the angle addition formula. Cosine alpha plus beta is cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. Cosine 2x can be expressed as cosine x plus x. Therefore, cosine x cosine x minus sine x sine x, which is cosine squared minus sine squared. Now, recall that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. Cosine squared minus 1 minus cosine squared 2 cosine squared minus 1. Cosine 2x is 2 cosine x minus 1. Now, using the same formula, we can find cosine 3x. Cosine 3x can be written as cosine 2x plus x. Now, sine 2x is 2 sine x times cosine x. Therefore, cosine 2x cosine x minus 2 sine x squared cosine x. And from the previous part, we know that cosine 2x is equal to 2 cosine x squared minus 1. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Therefore, cosine 3x is equal to 4 cosine cubed minus 3 cosine x. Cosine 2x plus cosine 3x is 2 cosine x squared minus 1 plus 4 cosine x cubed minus 3 cosine x. t is equal to cosine x. 4t cubed plus 2t squared minus 3t minus 1. Number 7. We have a set called A, whose elements are 2, 3, and 5. And we choose one element from A, randomly, 3 times. And B sub K is a number on the kth trial. For example, if we get 3, 2, and 5 in this order, B sub 1 is 3, B sub 2 is 2, and B sub 3 is 5. And C is the product of B sub 1 times B sub 2 times B sub 3. So first of all, let's calculate the total number of possible outcomes. On the first trial, we can get any one of these three numbers, and on the second trial, the same can be said, and likewise, on the third trial, we can get any of the three numbers. So there are 27 possible outcomes. Next, let's consider the first case, the probability that c is an odd number. In order for the product of three integers to be an odd number, none of them can be even, so they all must be odd numbers, meaning that we cannot choose 2, so we are only allowed to choose either 3 or 5. So 2 
choose one and we are doing this three times so two choose one cubed therefore the probability that c is an odd number is 8 over 27. Next, let's consider the second case, the probability that c is a multiple of 5. In order for the product of three integers to be a multiple of 5, at least one of them must be 5. So this might be 5, or this, or this. We don't know which one it is. The probability of choosing 5, at least 1, is 1 minus the probability of not choosing 5 at all. And this probability is the probability of choosing either 2 or 3, which must be the same as the probability of choosing either 3 or 5. Therefore, 1 minus 8 over 27, which is 19 over 27. And this is the answer. Number 8 We are given this function and we need to find the two extreme values. So let's first of all draw a quick sketch. We know that the graph goes through the points 0, 0 and 6, 0 and since cubic functions do not have global extreme values, we can assume that the question is asking us to find the local extreme values, which are the turning points here and here. So we already know the coordinates of one of the two turning points. So one of the answers must be 6. In order to find the other turning point, we need to differentiate this function. And let f dash of x be equal to 0 and solve the equation for x. So the x coordinate of the other turning point must be 2. So let's first of all figure out what this statement means. The absolute value sign turns everything inside into a positive value. So graphically, this means that this portion here, which lies below the x-axis, will be flipped up like this. So that no matter what the value of x may be, the y-value will always be either 0 or positive. And the second statement, g of x is equal to some constant a, means that we are drawing horizontal lines like these and counting how many times the graph intersects the red line. When a is less than 0, there will be no intersections, no intersections. When a is equal to 0, the red line will intersect exactly two points here. When a is in this range, there will be four intersections, 1, 2, 3, 4. And when a is here, there will be 1, 2, 3 intersections. Above this point, there will be 1, 2 intersections. So there can be 4 intersections at most. Number 9. In this question, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 data points. And the first part of the question says that we need to find the sample mean of these eight data points. So we basically have to add them all up and then divide them by the number eight. Which is 48 over eight. So the sample mean is six. Next, if we define a deviation as the difference of each data from the sample mean, the sum of squares of the deviation is blank and the mean is blank. Okay, so we are basically doing this. These all add up to one. 5, 4. 
and to find the mean, we only have to divide this number by the number of data points, which is 8. 154 over 8 is 77 over 4, and this is the answer. Section 2. Number 1. Question 1 says we need to express OA in terms of X and Y, using the fact that AD is the angle bisector of this angle here. So, in this question, we are using the following fact. In this diagram, if AD is the angle bisector of this angle here, then we can deduce the following. The ratio AB to BD is equal to the ratio AC to CD. So, using this fact, the ratio AB to BD is the ratio AO to OD. Now, AB is equal to 2, and BD is X, OD is, of course, Y. OAX equals 2Y, therefore, OA is 2Y over X. Question 2. In this question, we need to express y in terms of x, using the fact that CD is the bisector of this angle here. We can use the same rule as the previous question. CB, BD, CO, OD. CB is 1, BD is x. CO is the radius, and we know that the radius is x plus y, because BO is also the radius, and OD is y. So, y is x squared over 1 minus x. Number 3. We are going to use the triangle ABO. Because AB is perpendicular to OB, OBA is 90 degrees. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. OA squared is AB squared plus OB squared. From the first question, we do know that OA is equal to 2Y over X. And we also know that AB is equal to 2. And OB is X plus Y. And let's multiply both sides by X squared. and move everything to the right-hand side. And from question 2, we know that y equals x squared over 1 minus x. And this is going to be extremely tedious. We need to make sure that the denominator is the same in each term. And then we need to simplify the numerator, but this is going to be a very tedious calculation, so I will skip ahead and give you the next step. And now we have something that looks like a quadratic equation inside these parentheses, which we can solve using the quadratic formula. So x is 0 or 4 plus 2 root 3 or 4 minus 2 root 3, but x cannot be 0, and this is roughly 7.26, and this is roughly 0 0.53. But if you look at this expression, if x was bigger than 1, then y would become negative. But since y is a distance, 
y cannot be negative. Therefore, this is the answer that we are looking for. x is 4 minus 2 root 3. Substitute this value into this expression to get the value of y. And this is the answer. y is 8 root 3 over 3 minus 4. Section 3. Number 1. So we have a sequence such that the nth group has 2n minus 1 elements. a sub n is the first number in the nth group. s sub n is the sum of the elements in the nth group. In the first question, we are considering the sequence a sub n and we need to find the equation for the nth term of this sequence. The first number in the first group is 1. The first number in the second group is 2. The first number in the third group is 5, and the first number in the fourth group is 10, and so on. What you need to realize is that this sequence is very similar to the squares of natural numbers. 1 is 0 plus 1, and 2 is 1 plus 1, and 5 is 4 plus 1, and 10 is 9 plus 1, and 17 is 16 plus 1. So from this pattern, we can figure out the equation for the nth term of this sequence. When n is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1. When n is 2, 1 plus 1 is 2. When n is 3, 4 plus 1 is 5, and so on. So let's expand these brackets. So this is the answer to question 1. Question 2. In question 2, we need to find which group this number belongs to, and where in that group this number fits in. Since we are dealing with squared integers, let's do some Guesswork. 50 squared is 2500. 51 squared is 2601. 52 squared is 2704. Therefore, 2678 must be between 51 squared and 52 squared. We can deduce that this number is in the 52nd group. What is the first term of the 52nd group? Given that 51 squared is 2601, the first term of the 52nd group must be 2602. 2, 2, 6, 7, 8, minus the first term, 2, 6, 0, 2, plus 1 here, is, therefore, 2, 6, 7, 8 is in the 52nd group, and it's the 77th term of that group. Question 3, which is the final question of this exam paper. We are now dealing with the sequence s sub n, which is the sum of the elements in the nth group, and we need to find the equation for the general term. Using the second group as our example, in order to find this sum, we need to find the last number of this group, and to do so, we need to find the first number of the next group, and we also need to find the last number of the previous group here. So what we need to do is to find the sum of all the numbers up to this number and then subtract all the numbers before the group. The first number of nth group is n minus 1 squared plus 1 
And the first number of the next group is n plus 1 minus 1 squared plus 1, which is n squared plus 1. So the last number of the nth group is this number minus 1, n squared. And the last number of the previous group is this number minus 1, n minus 1 squared. And to find the sum of all the natural numbers up to this number, we can use the following. The sum of all natural numbers up to the nth term is n times n plus 1 over 2. So we can plug in these values into this formula to find the difference. n squared n squared plus 1 over 2 minus n minus 1 squared n minus 1 squared plus 1 over 2. So the answer is 2n cubed minus 3n squared plus 3n minus 1. And this is the end of the exam paper. If you have any questions, please let me know and see you next time.